Hello, good evening. Once, good evening, and uh, welcome back to this channel. After a long time, someone actually said, uh, sent me a message on WhatsApp, Father, you don't go holiday for your car kissing class. Yeah, it was funny. We actually haven't been on holiday. Let's say it's even now that we are we are active. Uh, maybe holiday online, but I mean, in the actual life, there's, there hasn't really been been a a holiday because I've been I just resumed the, the new semester and it's been really very intensive with a lot of work and a lot of classes and a lot of things to researches to do for some thesis projects and seminars and all of those and one very interesting thing something that should make you laugh a little I thought I was going to share with with you people I can't share every aspect of um, of life here in Rome it's uh, uh, roughly a week now. I've had some celebrations, my priestly anniversary celebration and my birthday. And then one thing very, very light-hearted happened. I was at the vending machine and I needed to have a drink. And there was this um, Zimbabwean guy, Zimbabwean guy, a guy, a priest from Zimbabwe, who was there with me. And uh, I saw a Nigerian from a distance and I holler. Hey, Afar, you not go to school? And the Zimbabwean priest was like, What kind of English is that? You Nigerian guys, you have a spoiling the English language. What is you not go to school? <laughs> and we all laughed, and I tried to let him know that that is pidgin. Yeah, our pidgin language with that, and our Nigerian slogan, our Nigerian identity, you know. But that's by the way, we are back. At least for this week we are back. We want to reflect on the feast of Christ the King, the solemnity of Christ the Universal King. But please, if you've not subscribed to our channel, take a look at the red button beneath and click on the subscribe. And if you like our video, help us to spread it by sharing it with your friends and family. If your friends and family members, especially Catholics and even non-Catholics because for instance this Sunday we'll be going about to dance and celebrate and show to the world our faith in Christ the Universal King. Different people will see us, Catholics and Muslims and all, and will want to know what is Christ the King all about? And that is the question we want to reflect on today. Not because there will be a lot of homilies, beautiful sound homilies, so it's not like maybe we don't know. But to just point out some little um, areas of reflection, you know, especially with our concrete everyday, everyday lives. And that is what we are trying to do. Now, the Feast of Christ the King was actually established in 1925 by Pope Pius XI, who took over from Pope Benedict XV. Benedict XV was a pope at a time where the world was at war, the First World War, and Europe was was um, was on the decline in terms of religion. Europe was becoming more secularized. The, 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 the drive, the campaign, the propaganda to push God aside from private life, from public life, from personal lives, let God be kept in the church and let us do our own thing and live our lives. That was what was going on. So when Pope Pius XI came in 1922, it was just after the First World War, which ended in 1918. So he, we are told that he, he was, it, was, it was characteristic of him to keep saying, repeating the, the part of the Catholic creed, the Nicene creed, where we usually say, and his kingdom will have no end. So he was fond of always saying his kingdom will have no end, until in 1925 when he released a, a magisterial document called Quam Primas to officially say that the Feast of Christ the King should be celebrated every year. <laughs> but when in the year now, you, 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 for some persons, this feast is relatively new. It's just about a century old. By three, in three years time, it should be 1,000 years old. But I don't think many of us know that 
This feast was not celebrated in the last Sunday of the ordinary time of the year. Initially, it was celebrated on the fourth Sunday of October when the Pope actually instituted it. So it was celebrated the last Sunday before the Feast of All Saints and about four weeks before the, the season of Advent. It was later that it was changed. It was later changed into what we are celebrating it today. Now, his kingdom will have no end. What is this kingdom? What is it about? First and foremost, before we reflect on the kingdom of Christ the King, let us also realize that this shift from the fourth Sunday of October to the last Sunday of the, of the ordinary time of the year also has a relevance. One of the relevance is its connection with last Sunday, the penultimate Sunday of the ordinary time of the year, wherein we were called to reflect on the reality of death, such that as the liturgical year, the ordinary season of the year is moving to its end, we are invited to reflect on two very important themes. One of them is the reality of the end of our lives. Just as the season is ending, our lives is also progressing towards its end. Now today, which is the very final ultimate Sunday of, of, of the ordinary season, Christ is placed at the head of it all, which also means that just as our lives are progressing or our life is progressing towards its ultimate end, that end will come at a point where Christ will be all in all. Christ is the finality of our lives. Christ is the crown of our existence. He is the Alpha and the Omega. That is the liturgical significance of what one of the liturgical significance, not the liturgical significance, one of the liturgical relevance of what we are celebrating this period. Now, about the kingdom of God, Jesus tells Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. That if my kingdom is not of this world, if his kingdom is not of this world, why is Pope Pius the fifth, I beg your pardon, Pope Pius the eleventh, with Quam Primas trying to institute Christ, the universal king who reigns over all of our lives and existence, such that as humanity is trying to push God away from existence, the Pope wants us to institute Christ. Because without Christ, there cannot be peace. Without Christ, human life is meaningless. Why? If the one whom we are trying to bring into our lives and our existence to give it a meaning is already saying that his kingdom is not of this world, then let us wait for him. See, when we get to his kingdom, where it is, then we can bring him in. But that is a misunderstanding. When Jesus says that my kingdom is not of this world, he is not saying that Christianity, God, is at one divide away from our lives, our world of existence today. He actually means that his kingdom is not to be understood in the sense that people understand kingship today. Power, affluence, influence, prestige, domination, you know, conquest. You remember that this time too, after the First World War, there was Nazism, there was Hitler, there was Mussolini of Italy, there was Stalin of Russia. These were powers, tyrants, trying to take control of human existence. Was that the way Christ's kingship is? No, that's what he means. That my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not like what you think, Pilate. It's not like what you are doing. You're thinking, I have come to become king. I am a king already, but not in the sense that this world understands kingship. That is what Jesus Christ means when he says, my kingdom is not of this world.